Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at this, the new Speedy B F7 version 3. Now this is an all new stack from Speedy B which consists of the version 3 F7 flight controller and a new 4-in-1 50 amp ESC. In this video I'm going to give you an overview of some of its features and capabilities because this thing has pretty much everything you would ever need on board including the kitchen sink and what I mean by that is not only does this flight controller have plug and play IO, a massive 500 megabyte flash storage chip. It also has a built-in LiPo checker and Bluetooth connectivity. What we'll do in this video is walk you through its features and I'll just give you an overview of what it's like and then at the end I'll give you some thoughts. Now just to be clear up front, Speedy B have sent me this for free. However, I have not showed them this video before it's been published. I have not taken any feedback from them at all and as always my thoughts are entirely my own. I also just want to add I will not be flying this flight stack in this video. I have haven't had the ability to get out with it. I've only had it a couple of days and I've only had the chance to have a look at it on the bench. I will be doing that later in another video. So today is an overview of the flight controller itself. So if you're interested in seeing that, stick around. So let's get it under the overhead camera and take a look. Okay, so to first of all, dive in and take a look at what we actually get. If we lift the lid on the box, you'll find inside this little card, which gives us some info to the SpeedyBee website. And the real nice thing with the SpeedyBee products is you have these QR codes on the back of the card, which links you to the SpeedyBee app, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, as well as the wiring guide. And it's just a nice and easy way to get to the info for the purchase you've made. Now, if we take a closer look in the top, you can see we have our ESC and we have our flight controller. The first thing you'll notice on the ESC is that it does have this aluminium heatsink attached on the top. One of the big changes on this ESC is that it is now a 50 amp model, not 45. And again, we'll take a little bit of a closer look at that in a second. If we lift them both out the box, first of all, and pop that one there, and then lift the flight controller out, you can see on one side, we've got all of the connections as well as our voltage regulator, our OSD chip. And then on the other side, we've got our SOC, our USB port, as well as ESP down here, which we'll talk about for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality as well. Before we take a closer look at them, we'll just jump into the box and have a look at what else we get. It says accessories. You'll see that this comes with a whole host of cables. And the main reason for that is every IO on this is pretty much available via a port. You could say this is a solderless installation. Now, there is no fully solderless setup because there are things you're always going to need to solder. You're going to have to do the motors and stuff. However, from the flight controller point of view, pretty much everything you are going to need is on a port or a connector. And we'll take a look at that in a second as well. They send you some nuts as well as some additional mounting. We then have the link cable that goes between the ESC and the flight controller. And then you'll see we get some bolts and a capacitor. And the capacitor they include with this one is a 1500 UF 35 volt. So that will be fine up to 6S, no problem at all. Also with SpeedyB, you also get a pre-connected XT60 cable with nice tinned ends ready to go onto the ESC included in the pack as well. Taking a closer look at the flight controller first of all, the new Speedy BF7 version 3 features the STM32F722 SOC. It has the BMI270 gyro with a barrow sensor on board and can support up to eight motors. One of the real big interesting things about this flight controller is that it has 512 megabytes of onboard flash storage for your black box logs. This is a dedicated flash chip on the board, which we'll look at a little bit more when we flip it over. But this is something that we haven't seen on many other controllers up until now. It has what they call solder free installation. And that is because all of the main IO is available on pads, but it is also on plug-in connections too. It supports up to four LED strips. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth configuration, and this is allowing for up to 33% faster firmware flashing via the SpeedyB app. You have full configuration of Betaflight via the app. You can change the motor direction wirelessly and do all of that with BL Heli 32, BL Heli S and Blue J via the SpeedyB app as well. There is also two onboard independent BEX on this controller, one nine volt one supplying up to four amps, as well as a five volt one allowing up to two amps. 
It also has a rather little unique feature, which is an onboard four level battery life indicator. And as you can see on the left hand side, there are four little LEDs that will indicate what the battery level is that is being received. And again, we'll look at that a little bit closer in a minute too. Hopping over to the ESC, this is an all new BL Heli 3250 amp model. It has a built in TVS diode offering additional protection on your system, but you also have that 1500 UF low ESR capacitor included as well. It supports PWM frequencies up to 128 kilohertz and supports up to 6S battery voltages. Its size is 45 by 40 with the flight controller being 41 by 38, giving you a total stack height of 18 mil and a total stack weight of 31 grams based on a 30 by 30 mounting pattern. As you can see, it has a CNC heatsink to help cooling with the ESC on the FETs, but also offers additional protection too. This model is based on the AT32F4 MCU, which is fully supported in BL Heli 32 and is different to the one that was used on the later versions of the V2 ESC. So as you've seen, this is a fully featured flight stack and has pretty much everything you would ever need on a flight controller. Just concentrating on a couple of those specific features. On the ESC, as I said, it has that built-in TVS diode and that's located just down there along the bottom next to the pads. They do obviously give you that capacitor as well. You should install that too, making sure you've got the best possible protection for your system. You then just have the connector there for the ESC, but it does have pads if you wanted to use them as well, but it is pretty much plug and play. And then you've simply got your nice large pads either side down here and here for our motors. It's nice to see they've got a nice rounded edge to them, nice and large, making it fairly straightforward and simple to solder to. You just need to be careful when you are that you're not touching the heat sink with your wires, making sure that they're not too long. Hopping over to the flight controller. Now, as I've said, there is a hell of a lot going on here. First of all, on this side, we have that ESP32 giving us our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth functionality functionality for the SpeedyB app. You can see the little chip antenna down here for that. That's going to give us our comms between that and the flight controller. Again, allowing you to do all the configuration, the setup, but even program the ESC as This board is fitted with a USB-C connector for the input output to your PC, which is great. I much prefer USB-C now to the micro USB. It's just a much more resilient connector. We also have that rather unique little feature with those LEDs on the side, giving you that built-in in battery checker and the idea is rather than have to have a lipo checker with you and if you want to check the voltages and look at your osd you can simply plug in and it'll give you a very quick indication down here that's quite an interesting and unique feature i haven't seen on another controller i'm not sure myself how much i'd use that but we'll try it and it'll be interesting to see it's certainly just nice to see speedyb doing things that others have not done now, one big feature of this controller is that they class it as solderless. And whilst you can see all of the pads are exposed on this side, if we flip it over, everything is on a connector. We have our four LED ports. We have our receiver port up here, which is TX and RX2 on the UART, as well as our voltage and our ground. We have our ESC connector, our camera input for our analog camera. You have your VTX then down the bottom here for your analog VTX, and it does have that OSD chip on board there too. But it also has a dedicated digital connector or what they call DJI, but it's actually digital. It supports TX and RX1. It has RX1. RX2 there as well for your receiver. So it does have the same RX2 as the port up here for say using with the DJI system if you're using it with the remote. But you could use this with HD0 for instance because it does have the UART in there as well. And it also has the nine volt back output which is up to four amps on that port too. You then have a GPS port over this side, which has TX and RX6 as well as SDA and SDL for a compass. So you've got every bit of IO available on a connector, making installation simple and easy. Just a couple of other things, as I've said, we have that big dual back, the nine volt up to four amp, as well as the five volt up to two amp. And you can see the very large inductor here for that. And then you have that massive flash chip, which is that one located there. But just try and tilt it. It's actually labeled Speedy B this chip, and that is your dedicated black box log fast storage built on the flight controller as well. 
The next thing I just want to show you quickly is this built-in battery level indicator. Now I've got it hooked up to a variable bench power supply which will allow me to actually demonstrate this. So I've just powered the flight controller up. It's currently set at 16.8 volts so we're on maximum 4S voltage. Now the way this works is it auto configures depending on the battery voltage that you've got. So whether you've got 3S, 4S, 6S, it simply configures and you can now see that it's configured it to show full output. Now each LED stands for a range of capacity. So for instance, the top one is between 75 and 100%. The next one is between 50 and 75, 25 and 50 and then 25% or below. So what I'll do is I'll just leave that there a second. And what I'll do is turn the voltage down one step at a time on the bench supply. And we'll then see what LED changes. Down to 16.5, 16.4. So you can now see that that fourth LED has now changed. You can see it's now flashing on that one, it's sort of right on the borderline to say that's okay. If I scroll down, you can now see that's gone off. If I keep going down, we'll get down to the next level to give you an idea. There we go. There, it flickered there. That's at 16.05, 16.0, so that's dead 16 volts. And then if I take it down further, that's just gone down at 15.7, 15.65. That's now shut the third LED off. And if we scroll down to see where we get to that bottom one, we're now down at 15.25 volts. There, you can see it's flickering there at 15.25. So it gives you a nice quick indication of what the battery level is. If I just switch the supply off a second and reconfigure this now up to 6S voltage. So we can just show you it at that. So we'll go to 25.2. It will then reconfigure itself once again. And you can then see that all four LEDs are indicated. And then if I start scrolling down, we'll start to see it then in a moment change. There we go. First LED's gone off. Second LED off there at 23.9, 23.9 volt. So again, you can see that it just offers that quick level indicator for the battery voltage. And it's just a nice little feature that they've got included. So if you did just want to have that very fast visual check, is the battery full? Yes, you can simply look on the side of the quad before obviously getting into your OSD and things like that. The last thing I just want to walk through on this flight controller on the bench is that support for the SpeedyB app via wireless on the ESP32. Now I've got the SpeedyB app installed and what we're going to do is connect to it via Bluetooth. If we select the Bluetooth option down here, we can see that the flight controllers appeared and then it will connect and it will allow us then to go in and do all the configuration via the SpeedyB app for beta flight. What is really nice about this is whilst you can use it for doing your main configuration from day one, the real great part is that you can make changes in the field simply and easily without having to mess around with cables and things like that. Now you have all of the usual functionality in here. So for instance, if I move the flight controller around, you can see it's moving on the display. It's not fully configured at the moment, as you can see, but we've got all of the standard options there. We've got our port options. We've got our main configuration screen, but you can also do some of the more advanced stuff like presets that have been added in beta flight 4.3 now as well. So for instance, if I go on to the presets tab, you can see that they're listed here. I can scroll down, pick one, if I just choose that one there, if I want to apply it, click apply, wait a second, and that will then apply that for the flight controller for us automatically. So it's not just the beat to flight configuration that we have, it's all of the preset options too. We can go down into our PID tuning, have all of the options down there. And again, you've got the selections along the top too. We've got our remote, our modes, but you've even got that motor option screen as well, allowing you to actually set up the motors on this too. Motor direction settings at the bottom, all of your D-shot settings and everything else as well. Now, I'm not gonna go into every single feature on this in this video, but I did just wanna show how handy that 
wireless functionality is. You can then also use it to go into the black box functionality too, because it has got that massive black box storage. As I said earlier, we can go down. We've got the options here. We've got the black box explorer. So again, I can turn on the side, export from flight controller, click on that, click connect, and it will allow us to actually bring that in as well. You can see we've got how much is on there. There's nothing on this one at the moment because it's brand new, but we've got those options there available too. Another really nice feature in the SpeedyB app now is the Express LRS Configurator 2, as well as the BL Heli Configurator. The Express LRS one, again, allows you to do the flashing via the system too. Last time I tried this, it wasn't fully working. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet, but it's good to see that functionality in there. We've got the BL Heli configuration for our ES see so I can tell it to connect to that we've got Wi-Fi or Bluetooth so if I go on to Bluetooth for this one click connect and as you can see we've got some of the options you've got the motor test and the other stuff there available too and then you've got all of the other options that are listed down the side within the SpeedyB app. They have been adding more and more to this over time, and it's really great just to have this additional functionality in the field. Even if you don't want to use it to fully set your aircraft up, although you can, you can have quick and easy access to making changes, especially with a new aircraft when you're setting up as well. Okay, so that is pretty much it from me on this one. As I've said, I've not had a chance to fly it yet, but I have to say, this is a hell of a featured flight stack. It has everything I can imagine I'd need on a flight controller, massive black box storage. It's got that LiPo checker, which is actually really quite good. We've got that Bluetooth functionality for communicating with the SpeedyB app. And we've got that new 50 amp ESC with some decent MCUs on board as well. So I don't see any issues with this one whatsoever. If you're interested in getting yourself this new stack from SpeedyB, do check out the link in the description. It will take you straight to the page for it. You can pre-order this now at the time of me making the video, or it should be available fairly soon. One of the real good things with the SpeedyB flight controllers is that remote control option that you can do all your configuration via Bluetooth. And we've seen more and more being added to that over time. We've now got that Express LRS configuration, the ESC configuration, and it's just really great to see how easy it is now to make changes in the field with flight stacks like this that have that wireless support on board. Anyway, that's it from me. I want to say a massive thank you to SpeedyB for sending it over. It is going in a frame shortly. Please stay safe. If you'd like to support us to continue to make content like this, please do check out the link in the description to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee. It is only through the support of guys like you supporting the channel on Patreon am I able to keep making content like this. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has signed up via Patreon recently. We've had a really amazing support increase from people with that. So if you want to allow us to keep doing it, please do check it out.